Hi everyone, just a quick video today, I just want to talk about several things, it's another news video. Um, first thing I really want to talk about, and this is the latest thing just to come out of um, America, and uh, namely Prince's friend, and I've just found out about it, is um, isn't you, you guys have all heard of Judith Hill, now she was this woman who um, was working with Prince just before Prince died basically, and Judith Hill, um, interesting character, she's um. Her racial mix is always astounding me. She's half Japanese, half black, which I've never seen that type of mix before. But anyway, regardless of what race she is, the poor woman's under fire at the moment because gossip mongers TMZ, I mean, they're the people who break all the latest stories. They broke that Michael was dead and they were the first to suggest that Prince had died of a drug overdose. Real nasty gossiping scamps, basically. All they do is hot lips gossip. They don't care if it's right or wrong. They love to just, you know, ruin celebrities' lives. They're always quick to mention who's getting divorced first and who's been unfaithful. They're just gutter mongers. I don't. But anyway, they're now trying to say that Judith Hill is a black widow because she just happened to be around Michael Jackson when he died because Judith was also one of the backup singers, was going to be one of the backup singers in the This Is It tour, basically. And then, of course, she was making an album with Prince in the beginning, which actually came out just before Prince died. And apparently the story is going on. I'm not even sure if this is true or not, but apparently Prince and her were having a relationship just before Prince died. And there's a famous video of her hanging around Paisley in the winter of 2016. And um. Who knows, and really who cares, it's just this usual beat up celebrity, but it goes back to a deeper issue also too, another Prince, Prince of Spring video, he wrote a video about how um, Sheila E is doing a bio, I think I might have already mentioned this and a few other people have too, is apparently she's doing a, filming a biopic about her relationship with Prince, and of course all these angry women jumped in and said, oh she's got no right, the bitch is just exploiting Prince's memory, and she's just there to jump on the bandwagon, blah blah blah, and I'm sick of these people who keep writing these damn books about Prince, about how they spent all this time with Prince. And I'm like, why get angry about them? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not angry if some woman gets a Prince. I think maybe it's because I'm a man and I'm a gay man. I don't really seem to see Prince as someone I want to have sex with. Or, he's so fine. Oh, my God. I love my Prince. I'm not like that. And I think there are a lot of women who are like that. And they really get on my nerves because it's just jealousy. You know, I mean, like. The thing that comes to mind is that big ass heifer who jumped on stage in 2007 and tried to put her arms around Prince's waist while he was singing. Then that big ass bodyguard came along and hauled her off. And she was like, Oh my God, oh Prince, I love you. And even at the concerts I went to, like, you know, some bitch for a pair of panties up on the stage. And then another bitch jumped up on stage and tried to get to Prince. And I mean, look, that's fine. I mean, you can fancy the guy, but do you have to be crazy about it? I mean, just because a musician is involved with someone does not mean that the woman that he's involved with or the man or whoever it is, is evil. And I get tired of this. I mean, Sheila E. was someone who actually spent a lot of time with Prince, someone who cared about Prince and Prince really liked him. If she wants to write a book or do a movie or do a stage musical, who cares? You know, I actually am interested in this stuff because, I mean, my relationship with Prince doesn't go beyond basically going to his concerts, buying his music and books about him. And, his total interaction with me was basically two winks and a smile, you know, so I mean, I'm always going to be intrigued by anybody who got close to Prince or got into his inner circle and into his thoughts. I mean, someone like Sheila E was sharing musical ideas with Prince, basically, and I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you know, or even Catch now, why doesn't Cat do a biopic, basically, yeah, but this is just stupid, and I mean, it's TMZ, and I mean, come on, people, TMZ, I don't even care about them, I mean, they're doing this, I'm not saying I love Meghan Markle, but they really are putting the knife into her, basically, and I just get tired of it. And I think there's some a racist current there, too. They always seem to beat up on the black celebrities, you know. I mean, the Meghan Markles, the Princes, the Judith Hills, the Michael Jacksons, you know, Kanye, you know. Anyone who's black and famous, they just love to tear down, and it's racist. You know, but then again, I suppose they're doing the same shit to white people, too, you know. I mean, I know the Kardashians, I mean, I know they don't look it, but they are actually white. I mean, the last time I looked up, Armenians are white, and they're only half Armenian. But anyway, I mean... Who cares? You know, I mean, these celebrities, they've got enough money to do what they want, and who cares? You know, I mean, if I had all that money and I had, I'm glad I'm not famous. I'm glad my videos only get 30 views each, because I'm not having people running around starting shit and talking shit. And of course, my comment about these women should back off got taken down within nanoseconds, you know. But anyway, what I'm saying is you can be a man on my videos without having to worry about women coming down on you. I mean, I see any crazy shit from women, I just take it down, basically. You know, I mean, one bitch called me racist, so I took her shit down. I don't have time for that shit. But anyway, moving right along, I want to talk about some other stuff. Um, I went shopping again today. Um, and as you know how much I love Sign of the Times, and I feel like I was a bit shortchanged because I had to import the set over. But what I found they did have in the shops down, I mean, I paid a lot of money for this. They had two, I bought two vinyl record sets of Sign of the Times, and I'll probably never pay them. First is this one. 
this is beautiful. This is a picture disc, and this is quite interesting. Again, I've just taken the records out to see them. And there's this one here, and the picture disc is this, basically. It's got the, um, and they're all remastered. I mean, it's a remastered album. See, this is 180 GSM vinyl. That's record one there. Isn't that beautiful? I just love these records. You know, I mean, I'll probably never play these, so they won't get damaged. But this is the type of gratuitous thing I love to collect. And it's all limited edition. So that one's blue. And then we've got the other one. And this one is peach, of course. And isn't that just beautiful? And they play, apparently. I mean, I haven't put them on yet, but you can see like they've got the grooves in them and everything. And I thought, okay, I had heard about the... I had heard about the picture disc set, you know, which I thought was pretty good, and I thought, then I was digging through the stack of albums, and I noticed there was another copy of Sign of the Times, and I thought, oh, that's interesting, and I picked it up, and it turns out this one again is another limited edition, as you can see, see, this is the peach vinyl, 180 gram peach vinyl, this is a special limited edition as well, and this one is beautiful, I mean, you guys are going to die when you see this, look at that, isn't that just beautiful, and this is like creamy peach, now, now, there's a question for all you, my viewers. If you had a record like this, would you ever play it? Okay, well, ask it in two ways. One, if this was your only copy of Sign of the Times you had on vinyl, would you play this or not? Or if you had other copies like I do, I've got now four vinyl sets of Sign of the Times. Now, who would want to play that? Isn't that just beautiful, though? Yeah, this is what happens when you have too much money and too much time on your hands. Now, in these black packets, so, again, you got peach and black, you know. And the funny thing too is, whereas the other album's just got the playing cover, this one has got the fancy, as you can see, sleeve here, see? You see Sign of Times is in it, just like the record, so that's my latest video. Now here's the red thing for you. This one was cheaper than the other one, so what do you guys figure out? So that's some more Sign of the Time collectibles, and inside was this thing here too, saying that I've got 20% off at the print store for another whole year, which is pretty cool, basically. And it's got my initials, pretty much, yep. So... That's my spending, and the final thing I want to talk about in this great, great video is um, my new series I'm starting. I'm going to be talking about my Prince book collection, I'm going to be focusing on some books. Has anybody ever seen this book? You probably don't know it because even though it looks pretty new, this book dates from 1988. And apart from Inside the Purple Rain, this is the first proper book of Prince, it just wasn't a picture book, and I think it's really nice, basically. So here you are. So I'm going to talk about this book, which is quite funny. It's got some of the first, it's the first proper biography of Prince that goes beyond Purple Rain. And I actually do think that you guys are going to love it, basically. Um, it goes right back, basically. I mean, that picture is so funny. So there you are. So originally I was going to do a tribute video about what Prince meant to me, but I might put that off in the meantime. I don't want to be a bandwagon thing. So there you are. Basically, if you read any shit about Judith Hill, I mean, support the poor woman, don't condemn her, you know, I mean, just because someone happens to be around people when they die doesn't mean they're responsible for their murders. I mean, it's very clearly obvious that both Prince and Michael were having problems at the time before they passed away. You know, dodgy doctors and drugs killed these guys, not Judith Hill. You know, I don't, I think if anything, Judith Hill was probably very upset, and apparently she wasn't even at Paisley Park when Prince's body was found. The only person in there besides Prince was Todd Schulenberg, whose basically role in there was to supply drugs. I don't care what anybody says. Bloody slimeball drugs. Apparently his father ran a rehab, my ass, you know. And of course, um, that um, Kirky, Kirky J guy, the bodyguard, yeah, Kirk Johnson, that's it. So there you are. Peace and be well and lots of purple love to you all. And if you haven't watched my review videos, already watch them because they're pretty groovy. Amen. And, and peace and be wild. Ow, what?